Hello to all students. This is Professor Masood Fuzel. Today we are going to discuss life cycle of loose smut of wheat. It is also known as Ostilocotritisi. It is a special type of fungus which infect cereal crops like wheat, rice, uh, uh, corn and some other cereal crops like barley. So there are different species which infect, infect different types of cereal crops. So, so today we are going to take an example of a wheat crop uh, which uh, is infected by a fungus known as Ostilago tritici, which is commonly known as smut. It is also called, it is called smut because it has spores which are black in color and these are dusty spores so that is why which resemble soot so that is why these spores are known as suits or smuts so let's start this cycle with a flower or ears of wheat for example a farmer sows seeds in the soil in usually wheat is sown in the winter season in the months of november and december when plant grows to a certain height they produce flowers so in the months of march and april wheat crop produce flowers Somehow, a spore of this fungus, smut fungus, Ostilacotritis, is uh, brought by wind or air on, in, on to the surface of these flowers. So, this is a spore which is falling, which is going to fall on the surface of the flower. But the farmer does not know about this spore that has infected to his wheat crop. So what happened? So I have taken a ear of flower or right over here to show the details how this spore is going to germinate. So this is a basic part of the flower and this is known as ovary in which fertilization is going to take place and seed formation will take place. And on the surface of stigma, this spore has been fallen via just like pollination. So on the surface of stigma, this pollen, which is known, sorry, this spore, which is known as teleotospore or chlamydospore or teleospore, which is a spore of fungus Ostilagotritis, which is known as smut, when arrives on the surface of stigma, it starts to germinate and produce a dicaryotic mycelium, which rapidly grows on the surface of the flower and then penetrates deep into the structure of ovary where seed is going to be formed after some time when fertilization takes place after pollination and seed process of seed formation takes place during this process the mycelium of this fungus also become stored inside the body of the seed in the dormant form so now let's look at this diagram this is a wheat kernel this wheat kernel, if we take a cross section of this wheat kernel, this contain whole stored food and also contain mycelium hyphae of fungus Ostilacotritis. During some months, this uh, mycelium can be kept as a dormant form. The farmer usually sells their most of the crop into the market while takes keep some seeds inside their house so that they can sow these seeds in next year in the uh, fields. So next year this farmer sows the seeds of the wheat in the field. So when these seeds germinate in the soil, these dormant mycelium also start to multiply and also start to serve, uh, multiply and divide. So this is a seedling, a small plant which is coming from this seed which is sown in the soil. At the same time, when the seedling is going to grow, the fungus mycelium also starts to grow. Now this seedling has become a plant. At this stage when we take a cross section from the surface of a leaf of a plant, as you can see in this diagram, the red, green colors are the cells of the plants. And in, with these green color cells, you can see the red lines. These red lines are fungal mycelium or hyphae, which are growing with the plant as the plant is growing taller. In the months of March and April, uh, wheat plants start producing flowers and this is a wheat flower which contain uh, ears of the wheat. 
and in these weeds also uh, there is a uh, fungus mycelium is growing inside it so so what we do we take a cross section from this diagram and see right over here that this kernel which is going to become a seed contain lot of fungus mycelium of astelacotidse later on inside the seeds inside the developing seed these mycelium changes into mycelial cells these mycelial cells then changes into spores which are known as chlamydospore or teleospore or teleotospores these teleospores produced in enormous amount which turns the seed kernels or seeds into black mass and whole flower of the wheat or whole ears of the wheat are become black suit like and whole crop can be destroyed if all the flowers of the wheat are infected by this fungus so in this way a great loss can takes place and which can leads to bankruptcy of a farmer so what happens these spores eat all the wheat kernels of the flower and produce enormous amount of spores which can be dispersed by wind and then these spores can infect another healthy flower just like this one and the whole only only the axis remain and all the seeds has been destroyed by this fungus so in this way the complete the life cycle has been completed so this is a very uh, uh, dangerous fungus parasitic fungus which destroys different type of our staple crops in in our different regions of the world let's look at this cycle in another way so that we can uh, see the details of this cycle so i'm going to start with dicaryotic mycelium dicaryotic mycelium as you know that the teleospore is going to fall on the surface of a wheat flower when it falls on the surface of wheat flower it contain dicaryotic mycelium it means that it contain cytoplasm and two nuclei which are haploid so that is why this is known as dicaryotic mycelium now this is a spore which is known as smut spore which is also known as teleospore which is also known as teleotospore or chlamydospore is dicaryotic this is a spore with thick wall and it has two nuclei inside the cytoplasm which are both haploid after falling on the surface of a wheat flower these smut spores uh, do karyogamy and their nucleus fuse with each other as you know that karyogamy is the fusion of haploid nuclei of the fungus smut spore now becomes 2n after the fusion of n plus n nuclei inside the spore after formation of diploid spore this spore undergo meiosis and during the process of meiosis each nucleus will divide into four nuclei one into 2 and then 2 into 4 which are all haploid after formation of four nuclei this spore produce a outgrowth which is known as basidium this basidium is an outgrowth on the surface of the uh, spore which is known as promycelium it contains haploid spores which are intersected by septum each nucleus is separated by a cross wall which is known as septum these basidia produce two types of hyphae one is known as positive hypha and other is known as negative hypha due to the difference of their genetic material there are two strains of hyphae when there are two strains of hyphae produced by the spores these hyphae produce a projection which is known as stigma they come across each other and fuse with each other and their cytoplasm fuse with each other which is known as plasmogamy and after plasmogamy there is a process known as dicaryotization during this stage both hyphae join together after plasmogamy there is a dicaryot both nucleus come across each other but karyogamy does not takes place now look at this diagram dicaryotic hyphae has be has become inside the flower inside the ovary as you can see right over here this is a spore after germinating and after all this process dicaryotic hyphae and dicaryotic mycelium has been produced inside the ovary dicaryotic hyphae contain two nuclei n plus n inside their cytoplasm which are separated by cross wall which are known as septa 
This dikaryotic hyphae become dormant inside the grain. When this ovary turns into grain kernel, wheat kernel, it becomes dormant inside the grain. When these seeds are sown inside the soil next year, these dormant hyphae become active and start to multiply inside the plant body. And they start to multiply, start growing, start growing. And when flowers are produced on the plant of the wheat, they also produce inside the seed kernels germinating seed kernels from where they are converted into mycelial cells and then from mycelial cells they are again changed into dikaryotic spores these spores are known as chlamydospores or teleospores or teleospores and then uh, all the spores have been produced they break the seed kernel and disperse by wind and to infect another healthy crop these uh, fungus this life cycle is also known as loose matter weight. It is because these spores are produced without any membrane or these are enclosed by a membrane of the wheat kernel. So due to the absence of membrane around their structure, that is why these uh, smut fungus is known as loose smut of wheat. So this is all for today. I hope it makes sense and uh, we'll see you in the next lecture. Until then, bye.